All right, his name is James T. Harris, and he's joining KFYI, and I wanted you to meet him because his story is unique. So first of all, thanks for coming on this show. Mike Broomhead. It's good to see you. Fantastic. Now, you're no stranger to television. No. I've watched your television spots. You are, you are accused by people of being either a plant or being used because you're conservative. And well, and, and you're black. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did not. Okay. American of African descent, yes I am. Oh, okay. That's why we, you know, this, uh, when I first got out there on the radio, people would come to live events just to look at me and say, you know, is this an act? Is this real? You know, but, you know? <laughs> I'm a unicorn. Well, well you are. You are. It's, it's like Haley's comment. You're from Wisconsin and a black conservative. I mean, that's, that's like the full... Uh, that's pretty rare. You know, a full package, and I was there during the, uh, when Governor Walker was first elected, and the whole Act 10 uh, movement, uh, we were right in the middle of that, and I was friends with all of them, uh, Speaker Ryan at the but time. But that's what Congress I first Ryan. learned yeah. about you. It was, it was to be in that hotbed, and I think a lot of what's going on now, the Petri dish was Wisconsin. So to be there, to be early in radio at the time, and to have those type of connections, those type of uh, uh, relationships really did help me uh, at the time, I didn't know it, but it helped me to become the conservative talker that I am today. What's interesting is our stories are very similar. We both started as callers into talk radio. Yes. No experience in the in the genre None. of radio. None. And went from being a caller to on the air weekends. Mm -hmm. Same with me. Mm -hmm. And then got a job. But what's funny is you had you talked about the petri dish of Wisconsin, SB 1070, immigration, Arizona. That's where I was thrown in the middle of it. And you find out then. What the world sees you are and what you are sometimes are two different things. You're absolutely right. And, and when that was going on, you were uh, uh, in weekends. I was weekend, and I had to fill in for a Tucson talker, John Justice. And SB 1070 was hot. And I jumped in it, and I didn't know a dang thing about it. And so I went to the producer, and I'm like, look, man, you know, this is in my wheelhouse right now. And he's, he was nervous because I was, like, bombing on the air. He said, do your thing. I did my thing. It worked. Um, and then a year and a half later, I was invited to uh, the opportunity to have a full-time job uh, doing radio in Tucson, and that's when I became familiar with all of these issues, which worked for me because when I went back uh, last year during the presidential election, uh, as a son of Wisconsin, living on the border, I had a whole new perspective that I gave to my listening audience and to my friends back in Wisconsin. One of the things that has impressed so many people that didn't know you is your presence on social media, uh, YouTube videos. How many views on some of your videos? Uh, the, the, the highest view I had was the, the one right before the NFL, right before they knelt in the second weekend of the, night, uh, of the NFL season. I said, don't do it! If you do it, it's your NFL is going bye bye. That one got 23 million uh, hits that I'm aware of at the time, um, and I've had a couple of other 10, 15 million hits off of the the Facebook feed. Then we put it on YouTube, but it became like a sensation right a, a year and a half ago. So, uh, is it because you can say things? Politically, that I can't because my color isn't the same as no. yours. Is it because you're a you're an African American man saying this about it at the time an African American president or an issue that seems to be a black issue? What do you attribute it to? Mike Broomhead, I am a beautiful man, and pretty people can say things that ugly folks can't. I'm just playing. We're gonna have so much fun. <laughs> uh, what it is? What it is? Somebody I get his glasses clean, <laughs> would you? The the, um, the fact that you know because we said earlier I'm a unicorn. People don't expect to say, me to say these things. Do you remember the first time you heard Rush Limbaugh? Every conservative remembers right. that. And you're like, man, he's saying the stuff that I think. It's the same phenomenon with me. I really do believe these things. I say them, and I have to tell you, at first, I was even taken aback at how people would respond to it. But I think the fact that when we get past the, the ethnicity, and we look at the fact that we're Americans and that we all right. share a culture, it's refreshing to see that there are people who are out there saying the same things and not afraid of the, what I call, blacklash. So, well, so take, go with that because you look at what's happened. Do you, you get a lot of accusations. One of the clips I saw of you, you were doing it, you, it was, they had you against somebody that was a Democrat that was also black, and you said, I'm done, I'm out. And you took the earpiece out. How much of that is real for you, where you're just oh. sick of it, and the backlash, what you call blacklash. Right. 
infamous scene in Walk Off. What happened was I was that, you know, they had the angry town hall meeting in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I was that black guy that stood up and begged Senator John McCain to take it to Barack Obama in the last uh, uh, debate. And I had no idea what I was doing. My wife wanted me to be there. I just got tired of hearing them bloviate about global warming and shot that out there. And it ended up changing my life because of the world, or I should say nationwide exposure, but the backlash came. And that heat that I took, the, the CNN walk-off was like after weeks of me reading my email, you know, you're not supposed to do that, you're not supposed to read your, your hate mail, you're not right. supposed to read your fan mail, but I was new to radio and I was all excited and I was injecting this hate. And when this show came on and uh, started calling me a sellout and stuff on the air, I just kind of popped. <laughs> and that was the infamous No More CNN and I walked off the set. To answer your question, I still get that. But it's not as intense as it was back in 2008. You know, you had an Amer American of African descent running for the first time. Yeah. It was very popular. Um, you would think I want to be on that team, but it's, it's like you, you know, uh, during the uh, the bowl game, uh, Mike, you, you're you a University of Miami fan. You don't want to see Wisconsin win. You don't yep. want to see anybody win. Well, this is my team. I get the Republican it. Party's my team. So I, even though Barack Obama was a black American, it was a first, it was historic, I didn't stand for anything he stood for. Ideologically, we were separate, so why would I vote for something just on the basis of the color of your skin? I thought it was supposed to be about the content of your character. Ooh, that was good. We're going to talk about the conservative circus. Yes. That's what he calls this show. When we get back, you're going to hear what you're going to hear when he starts <laughs> on the 15th of January. Don't go away. All right, we're back. James T. Harris is my guest. He starts afternoons at KFY, our radio station, 5.50 a.m. on the iHeartRadio app, January 15th. He starts with us 4 to 7 in the afternoon. You can catch his show there. So let's talk about the conservative circus. Why is the show called the conservative circus? You know, my big opportunity uh, for full-time radio, I want to break in, it happened to be in Tucson, Arizona, which is Pima County, which is the, probably the leftist county outside of Dane County, Wisconsin, outside of Berkeley. So we had a, a wonderful time just talking about local government, which is completely run by the Democrat Party. And it was, a, it was a clown show. It was a circus. And part of this thing sort of evolved over time. And we love to talk. Uh, I'm a hardcore conservative, but I love to talk to people on the other side because conversation is the spice of life. So we wanted to make it fun. We wanted to make it inter energetic, controversial, on the edge, but it's a circus. It's a show. At the end of the day, if you take yourself too seriously, you know, other people sh really shouldn't. Um, we want to have a lot of fun as we're exposing what's happening in our community and as we're talking about national politics. The circus theme sort of, a, a, sort of came about over time, and we have the three ring circus, we have side acts, we have side shows. Uh, in my show in Tucson, we had regular characters that would come on who were quite serious in what they were doing, but in this element made this information fun. We called it infotainment. And I'm excited to try to bring that to the big top to, 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 to the ballet. That was funny when they introduced you Oh, I was at the meeting when they introduced you to the sales staff, and I don't think they quite, they, they didn't know what they were in for. But you're a very personable guy, and I think because of your background wasn't here in radio. Your background, you were a school teacher. School teacher for 10 years. Um, what grade? Like? I was a high school teacher for oh. 10 years, and I loved it, loved every minute of it. Um, and then I uh, remember, you used to have these speakers come in, and they would do like two, uh, 45 minute speech and the kids were like all excited. Oh, he was great. I'm like, look, I'm with you every single day. And you get excited about somebody for one hour? I could do that. And it turned out that when I stopped teaching, I became a professional speaker. Um, I spoke at uh, universities, at, at some high schools, uh, corporations, did very, very well with that for seven years until that McCain moment I was telling you about. Yeah. And that's when the Obama people got a hold of my website, got a hold of my business clients. And within two weeks, I went from being a very, did very, very well to nothing. Because you spoke out on something that was opposite. So your, your public speaking career was not politically motivated. No, it was not. It had nothing to do with politics. It had everything to do with generation, generational history. What I taught in high school, I ended up teaching for corporations because we talked about history being in seasons and generations in cycles. I put the two together for corporations to give them a little view of what was in their workplace. So when Kathy Griffin complains that her career is ruined because she holds the president's head up in effigy after it's been cut off and complains that ruins her career, 
You, yeah, that's just got to make you just shake your head. It I, happened to you long ago. All I did was uh, beg for Senator McCain to get serious with Senator Obama in the third debate, and my speaking career was put to an end. It was just like this. I was on a plane in South Carolina. The flight attendant walked up to me and said, I hate you. And she was American of African descent. Right behind her were two pilots, Americans of European descent. Thank you for what you said. It was that stark. But the haters got a hold of my site, and I was I was finished. So I kiss, I still speak, but the politics in the corporation, as you know, right. it just doesn't work. So they don't want to take that chance. Do you think we're ever going to come to a place where it isn't assumed? You made a joke because you're a Wisconsin fan. I'm a Miami Hurricane. You cracked a joke that stereotypically. I should have been the Wisconsin fan. Exactly. You should have been the Hurricane. Exactly. Is there ever going to come a day in American politics where it's not just assumed because of your skin color you're a Democrat? I think the Obama administration set us back about 40 or 50 years. I really do. Uh, to answer your question, yes, we will get to that time again, but we're going to have to defeat the liberal ideology. And I think we're well on the way of doing that. I think that President Trump has been a pleasant surprise in that because he's not backing down. The political correctness does not affect him, and he's giving other people opportunity to speak truth to ignorance. Well, I can't wait for you to start. Now, Monday, you're going to be on my show just yes. kind of once a day, everybody to kind of get a, get there. I don't know if they're just trying to figure out if the audience, what the audience is going to do, <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to working with you. So, again, it's 4 to 7 p.m. if you're able to tune in on live at KFYI, 550 a.m. in Phoenix, or the iHeartRadio app, his podcast will be available just like mine is there. You want to get a, a fresh view on things and an opinion, obviously a very opinionated guy. His name is James T. Harris. Look him up online because you are going to love what he has to say. Even if you disagree, you're going to love the way he Absolutely. says it. Absolutely. We want to have fun. It's the circus. Everybody loves the circus. Every, who, so who's, I was going to ask you who's the biggest clown, but if you say me, <laughs> I'm coming over the table. You know what? The clown of the week is Steve Bannon. We're going to have a clown of the week uh, uh, series, not just on the left, but whoever's acting clownish, that's, that's going to be part of it. That right now for this week, Bannon, and you nailed it in your opening monologue. All right. Well, it is, James. Thanks so much, man. Looking forward to having you. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. We will be back.